Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I want to welcome you to the September GCLS virtual series event, All About Marketing, with Amanda Radley and Casey Luck. If you run into technical issues, please log off and log back in. This usually resolves most issues. This panel is being sponsored by I Read Indies, and we're going to play a video from them. Our mission is to bring visibility, recognition, and support to self publishing authors who put their own time and money into publishing their own work. But it's more. I Read Indies is community, networking, resources, friendships. Be the captain of your own ship. But you don't have to go it alone. Check us out. IReadIndies.com. Enjoy the panel. Thanks again to I Read Indies for sponsoring this panel. So let's get started. We hope that you enjoy this event. I'd like to turn the session over to Amanda and Casey at this point. Hi, everybody. So you might notice that Claire, our moderator, Claire Ashton, our moderator, is not on screen. She actually came down with a cold. So I am going to read her intro, and it will be in the American accent. So I hope you're not disappointed. To make this session and as interactive as possible, please use the Q&A Q &A box during the entire session. So down at the bottom of your screen, you should see a Q&A box next to the chat. We are using something new. Donations are welcome and can be made throughout the event using the link available in the chat. These donations are used to cover all our technical costs, you know, this Zoom link, everything of the virtual series so we can continue to bring you exciting sessions. Amanda, we have to be exciting. Hope, you, hope you're ready. I'll try, I'll try. <laughs> With relevant content. No donation is too small. So if you got a couple bucks, throw it in there and we really appreciate it at GCLS. All right, that's my spiel and I'm gonna introduce myself. That's next. I am Casey Luck. I've been writing uh, women loving women fiction and romance especially, well not especially, mostly adventure, to um, three and a half years. I have been marketing since then, a little earlier than that actually, as I got started building my brand. But I'm pretty well known on Facebook and my newsletter is pretty popular too. So hopefully I can bring you some good advice. Amanda, it's all yours. Thank you. Um... I've been writing, I see, I'm trying to think of my own bio. That's, that's really terrible as a marketing person. Um, I've been writing for about six years. Um, I have written with um, publishing houses and I've been um, an indie publisher as well. But my, my primary background was marketing. I ran a digital marketing agency in London for qu quite a few years. We, we don't have to put numbers on everything. Um, but yeah, I'm very comfortable with marketing. I've, I've worked in digital marketing for a long time. And um, when, I, when I became an author, that was one of the very first things that I, I knew that I'd be able to do well. And uh, that's kind of where we met, Casey, wasn't it? We're talking about marketing in various places. Yeah. Yes, in a Facebook post, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep, good old Facebook. And we've been so, working together ever since, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been good. Um, right, we already have some questions coming in. Um, right. As Casey says, do do put the questions in the Q&A. If you put them in the chat, we might not be able to see them because um, it, it sort of goes past co so quickly, but in the Q&A box, we will be able to find them. So uh, Evie Bancroft asks, uh, what is the one thing you wish you had done in your marketing at the beginning of your career? Oh, I'm take it back a little bit. Oh, that's a tough yeah. one. I'm marketing wise, I mean, I would mm. say better editor, but marketing wise, yeah, I would have started my mailing list sooner, actually. Everything, I would have put it in the back of my book on the first few books that I have a mailing list and a newsletter. And please join because that is very important. So I, I kind of waited almost a year. I hate to admit it. Before oh, I really yeah. understood, I know, understood the value. I mean, everybody talks about it. get a marketing list and you're like, really, how am I going to do that? But once you do, it connects you with, my, in my case, a few thousand readers. 
when I have a new book out. I mean, they they know ahead of time. If they're not on Facebook, they know. If they're not on Twitter, they know. So it's super powerful and it gives you the opportunity to control your fans if they're not on social media. So that's that's what I wish I would have done. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's really important because a lot of people say, oh, you know, an email marketing list is a lot of work, but you control it. And I think that's massively important because when you think about social media, if someone has a bad experience on Facebook and they, they leave, you're not going to be able to contact that person anymore unless you have access to their email. So um, I was actually going to say email marketing list as well because I, I didn't wait a year, but I waited a little while because my first two books came out with a publishing house. So I didn't really think I was going to do too much of the marketing side of things. Um, so I, I kind of have my third book was just a bit of a sort of cold launch. And then a little while after I thought, I really need email marketing. Um, but I think for me, if it wasn't to be email, it would be um, Amazon ads because mm -hmm. I understand the advertising platform. And I think if I got started with that sooner, I would have been able to, to build on that a lot quicker. So I think for me, it would be using Amazon marketing ads. And just to explain to people what that is, is when uh, people are shopping on Amazon, Amazon uses um, clever algorithms to work out what all of their customers are buying and they recommend similar books, but you can buy your way into that. So if someone's looking at Casey's book and I think if someone was interested in Casey's book, they'd be interested in mine, I could put my adverts on Casey's product page on Amazon. And mm -hmm. I had a lot of success with that. I'm not sure about you, Casey. We're probably yes. getting, I'm sure, oh, I'm absolutely. sure we're going to have them. Yes, I'm I sure didn't we'll use work. them early. I didn't use them early. I didn't know what they were. Um, yeah. Yes, I use them huge now. They're very important as part of the launch. Yeah, yeah. I think that. I think yeah. For me, I would I would have done that sooner. So moving on, uh, Paula asks, can you give us any tips on growing an email newsletter list, even if you don't publish romance? I have a sign up on my website, but I'm not sure how best to drive folks to it. Any thoughts appreciated? Um, I'm going to say, Paula, if you control your book content, put it in your book. Um, don't just rely on your website because, again, your website is somewhere that you have to get your, your people to go to. Whereas if they're reading the book and it's at the end of the book, at the end of the book is a perfect place to say, did you enjoy this book? Leave a review, go sign up to my mailing list or any like freebies that you give or stuff like that. So even if you don't publish romance, obviously, they've already picked up the book. So that, that's a good place. Do you have any any feedback on that, Casey? You, you obviously totally don't agree. like Yes, totally agree. Back of the book. On your Amazon page on uh, Amazon, I put it in my description, my website. On the very first page of my website, I have subscribe. Or actually, I say something like learn more or something clever. <laughs> but, yes. but yeah, you need to put it in as many places as you can where you're gonna, the reader's going to see it. And those are the best ones. You can also get giveaways. You can also do giveaways as part of a group on like something called Book Funnel, for example, as part of a group and get some that way. And they're they're. They're good for your mailing list, more the better, but they're not as good as the ones that get them from places where they're looking for you because they really like you and that's the ones you want on your mailing list. Absolutely. Um, I think it's, it's important to remember that not every email is, is sort of equivalent in value. If you get um, somebody signs up to your mailing list after they've read your book, that's someone who's read your work, is interested, they want to know when you're releasing another book, they're interested in you. Now, if someone was to sign up to your book, uh, your mailing list from a freebie giveaway that you did, that could be just someone who's just applying for lots of freebies. I mean, I know people who apply for every free book there is, and they, they have thousands of them. And they're never going to get to them. And they certainly don't care if you have a new book out for sale because they're still going through their free books. So right. I think sometimes you have to be a little bit careful and curate the list, but um, just getting started you know, you're, you're, it's, it's good to get, get your name and your email out there anywhere. Um, anonymous attendee, how mysterious, I like it. Um, what sort of things do you put in your newsletter and how often do you send one out? Oh, Casey, are you, are you regimented? Do you, do you have a, are you every Friday? I'm not regimented. I am one of those people that's not regimented. I, of course, have the welcome, you know, newsletter that goes out when you sign up. It's part of how you set up your newsletter. Um, but I'm not. When something interesting is happening, hopefully once a month, but sometimes I'll do three a month and then I'll skip a month. 
Yeah. Because I want the content to be really valid. When someone sees my email, they're like, there's something to read here. There's, she's telling us something. So I got to look. So I'm about to put a book out. Here's my promo. What the heart sees is coming out. There's already been one email about it. There'll be another one about the pre-order. And then a few days after the launch, there'll be another one. So I put that kind of stuff in there. But also, I don't just do that. They don't just, just want to be, here's your book. I also put in, like, I went on a recent road trip. I put in some pictures of that. They like personal information. They want to know you. That's why they look at your newsletter. So you need to have a, a nice mix of both. Otherwise, yeah, that, that's how you get them to open it. Yeah, I think, I mean, there's a few, there's a few um, lines of thought on this. Some people do uh, a weekly newsletter. Some people do... Uh, monthly ones some people do one whenever something interesting is happening I'm I'm with KC I do it when, when I whenever I have something to say sometimes I don't have anything to say for a few months uh, well not a few months maybe two months is my tops I mean I like to, I like to sort of you know bug people about something at some point um but some people will um want to stay in touch with their readers and will literally want to uh, narrate their week on a Friday they might say yeah. these are the things I did this week um and they're very successful. Lots of people like that. Lots of people like to know what authors get up to. Um, so that can be that can be really interesting. I think if you don't have a huge back catalogue to talk about, um, just you can just talk about yourself. Talk about your writing process. There's so many things you can talk about. You don't just want to fall into the trap where the only time you ever email your your newsletter is to say my book's out, right. please buy it, and then wait another six months or however long it is until your next book's out there are so many other things that you can say um so i'm random again like with casey it could be three in a month it could be one a month it could be one every other month things i put in is anything to do with releases anything to do with pre-orders anything to do with events where i am and anything relating to the community as well like anything to do with gcls that might be of interest to people right. um and I, I, I sometimes do spotlights on other authors. I know, Casey, you've done that as well, yeah. where um, you might highlight another author. That's quite good if you can link up with other authors. Um, a point of importance, so don't share your email marketing list with someone. Don't oh, yeah. download the spreadsheet and no. send it to someone. No. Firstly, it's not very nice to do. Secondly, it's illegal to do. Right. Um, so if you're going to do what... When people refer to a newsletter swap, that's when... Let's say Casey and I was going to do a newsletter swap. That's when Casey would provide some content to me and I would send that out to my, my mailing list in the same way that I would normally send a newsletter. So my, my people, my platform, just Casey's content. And then in reverse, I would share some content with Casey for right. her to email her mailing list. So do be careful when you hear about newsletter swaps. Right. Very good advice. Thank you. Um, <laughs> another anonymous uh, my biggest marketing challenge is not wanting to be that person who annoys everyone by talking about my book my book my book I will cringe when I see shameless self-marketers but I also envy their abilities to put themselves out there do you have any advice for either tapping one's internal shamelessness or not being that person that's a tricky one Can I, is this the right direction to point to you to go ahead and go first <laughs> Yeah, I'll go first. Um, I change. Sometimes I'm very much like uh, gonna bang on about my book because you know this book was blood and sweat and tears, and I'm I want you to read it, and I think it's important. And sometimes I don't talk about my book that much. I think it depends on where you sit. Mm -hmm. um, if there, I think this is the most important thing over the course of this entire panel. If there was one way to market everything and one way to do everything, we wouldn't be here. You just pick up the guide and you'd go to that chapter point four and you'd know how to do it. Everyone's different and everyone expects different things from different authors. So it's 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 really relevant how you feel. If you feel particularly gross, constantly hocking your wares, then then don't do it. Easy now. If, yeah. Well. <laughs> But if you're comfortable talking about your work, um, go ahead. I mean, loads of people do it. I mean, I know I know people who just have social media accounts solely to talk about their work. They don't have anything to do with themselves. They don't have anything to do with anyone else's work or anything anything other than exactly what they're doing at that moment. My book is out. My book is out. My book is out. That's all they have. So I think it's about your level of comfort, really. Yeah, totally agree with all of that. Actually, um, when you're in these groups. 
you're right. Some people do what we call drive-bys where they just post about their work and they don't leave any information other than that. And they don't engage in the group. So if you're gonna use groups on Facebook or something like that, you need to engage. You need to care about the people so they'll care about you back. And don't just post about your book all the time. You know, Tell them about what you did yesterday if it was something fun. So definitely engage. I agree with, with that. Sometimes it can be annoying if people just post about that. But you also need to know, like Amanda said, there's no magic bullet. So marketing is all over the map on what you're gonna do and you need to pick a few and master them. So I'm sorry, we're not gonna tell you on here, do this one thing and it'll work. There's just a ton of content about marketing. Yeah, and I think one of the things, if I, if I could give people one thing to take away, it would be trial and error. Find what works for you personally. What do you, you know, do you enjoy being someone who talks a lot about your book on social media or does the idea of social media just horrify you? Find what you enjoy and don't try to force yourself into doing things you don't enjoy. I mean, you will obviously have to do some things, you know, you can't, you can't be too much of a, a prima donna about it. There's going to be some things that you're going to not enjoy that much, but if you absolutely hate the idea of putting yourself out there, if you don't like, um, if you really don't like the idea of having a website or something like that, if you really have a problem with it, then don't do it. It's that it, some of those things will potentially cost you, but it's not worth the amount of heartache that I know it can sometimes cause people. And then the other thing with trial and error is test things because like Casey and I, we, we've had debates in the past where you have said that this thing absolutely worked for you and it absolutely didn't work for me and vice versa. And it's just, we have a different market and different things work for us. And just because someone says, oh yeah, I, I can absolutely sell X number of books through email marketing, doesn't mean everybody can. But there are certain things which do follow truth, but try try things and, and test them. Right, let's dip into the Q&A. Here we go. Is there a certain program or app you use for your newsletter? Casey, what platform do you use for your mailing list? Well, I started out with MailChimp, which I liked, but their rates are a lot. So I'm now switching to MailerLite, which... Okay. That's not fun having to move all your mailing list information over. And MailerLite is less expensive and actually find their tools a little better, better than MailChimp. So these are your choices. MailChimp is free in the very beginning, but if you grow fast, you're going to have some pretty hefty charges. If you want to start off with something that isn't going to charge you a lot, but isn't quite as cool as MailChimp when it comes to what they have available, then go with MailerLite. So those are, those are the two options I use. There are others, but those are the two I recommend. Yeah, exactly the same for me. We're going to have to find something to argue about soon, or this is going to be really boring. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be boring. <laughs> yeah, we're going to, well, I'll find one that we can argue about soon. Amanda, but, you need to dance on Facebook. I, <laughs> yeah, we I need to go live. I need to go live now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same for me. I used I used MailChimp for, I don't know, a couple of years, maybe three years. Um, and then my mailing list started to grow and grow. And, and I don't find, like you, I don't find MailChimp as intuitive as MailerLite. And MailerLite has a few more... Um, a few more interesting features. And the other thing that happened to me is that actually the, the, the thing that made me change was the European GDPR, the data changes. Do you remember when you received about a thousand emails a day about GDPR into your mailbox? Right. Yeah. That was really, really relevant for me being in the UK and what I was doing at the time. And at the time, it's not true now. MailChimp was like, eh, GDPR, that happens in Europe, but it, it happens everywhere. And yeah. MailerLite were very, very hot on it. So I made the change then. And I love MailerLite. And I was very glad that I made the change then because as my mailing list grew, same as you say, it, it becomes a lot more expensive on MailChimp. Um, so yeah, that's MailerLite. That's um, L-I-T-E, MailerLite for anyone who's looking at those. But do, again, do check them out yourselves. Um, I think both of them are free to start, aren't they? And you can... Yes. Yes. have a play around with them and see which one you prefer because just because we prefer mailer light doesn't mean doesn't mean it's the best one right. um i don't have my mailer light t-shirt on to advertise for them so no no i think <laughs> i feel like we should be getting some kind of like little promo link or something <laughs> um similar question regina asks um can you tell us how to create a marketing list i'm new to all of this so again um try mailchimp or mailer light whichever one you prefer um and and I, I would basically, I'm going to break it down, actually. So 
With an email marketing platform, you have subscribers, which are your email lists, and you have campaigns, which are the emails you send out. So you want to gather subscribers, emails from people. So you might want to give away a freebie or you might want to put it in your book. So the easiest way would be to put it in your book, put it in the front matter or the back matter of your book um, and ask people to sign up. And people will. You, you think they won't, but they will. Um, don't be afraid that you're going to start a mailing list for 10 people. It snowballs very quickly. Um, and then it's about having campaigns. So a campaign is essentially um, the, the content of the email. You're going to send an email out. What's your subject line, which could be fantastic new romance book available soon, pre-order now, that kind of thing, or a sale you're doing. And then the content within the email. It's, it's very, very easy. So just go and have a look at the platform and, and you'll figure it out. You'll figure out exactly what kind of um, elements that you want to add into your emails. Do you have any advice for that, Casey, for sort of getting started? Yeah, they're just getting started. The, the thing you got to remember when you're, with all marketing, but especially with the newsletter, because it's hard to do in the newsletter, is you are a rock star. And you have to present yourself that way. Don't hold back and say, you know, I put out a book and it's okay. You know, you're not going to say it's okay, but you're not going to say, this is the best book you're going to read. This is the book of the year. You just wait, wait till you see it. You have to really feel it because you are a rock star. You finished a novel. You finished a novel. You did it. You are a rock star. So tell people that in all marketing, but especially it's hard in, especially hard in the mail and the mail list of the newsletter because you're writing about yourself and it's just hard to be super positive but you've got to do that you are yeah. a rock star yeah I sometimes help my wife with her email marketing and she'll come in and she'll she'll have written something and she'll go is that okay and it'll be like my book is out and I'll be like my fantastic new why a well you know what you have to describe you have to embellish you have to it's it's some of those writing skills that you use to complete the book you have to then channel some of that energy into the into the email you have to you have to be a bit salesy and as Casey says you you finished a book you you have earned the right to congratulate yourself and to tell everyone how wonderful it is yeah. right let's have a look what else have we got so I've got a quick question for me um what is the difference in your marketing strategy as an independent author versus being with a publishing house um hardly anything I, I still, um, publishing houses will do what they can to market your book, but at the end of the day, you're the best marketer. Don't, don't go to a publishing house and expect that they're going to be able to do everything for you. They can't. They, you are your best salesperson. Um, so for me, I, there's very few, I mean, I can't control sale prices. My books will at some point go on sale um, with my publishing house. But um, so there's less flexibility if you're with a publisher. Casey's going to smile smugly now with her, all her power and control she has. Um, I control everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You have full control. Um, but then, you know, I, I, I do get the benefit of my publishing house having a large audience, but I still have to control that to some degree. I still have to get in front of people. I have to do readings. Um, I certainly have to email my own marketing list. So um I say there's very little difference. I don't know if you have anything you want to add to that case. Well, I, I will actually add one thing. I think that I think because you have the bold strokes emblem on your book, you are going to get more authors. I've done I've done some surveys, and some people just they love that they love that, and they're going to go for it. But other than that, you're right. I can put my book on sale any day I want for any price I want, and then I can send it to my newsletter list, and they can go buy it for less. So that, yeah, right. It's it, it's similar, but there are a few things that are different. Yeah, yeah. I, I would I would say I when I was an indie author, I also did like surveys and the amount of people who will only buy or say they will only buy from a publisher is yeah. quite surprising. It was changing year on year. I think I did the survey for three years and it, it was going down, but yeah. It's still there. It's still it's still it was a, it was a strict it was a strong 30%. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Julie asks, what are the most important steps you do before a new book launch? <sighs> Launching a new book. Right. <laughs> Am I allowed to say drink heavily? <laughs> well, it's true. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a little stressful, a little stressful. 
Um, I do have stuff. a checklist that's kind of loosey goosey. I, I am going to make a better one. Actually, I'm going to make a better one for my collective. I read indies so that everybody has kind of a map of what to do. But yeah, there's some certain things you have to get ready. You, I, I strongly believe in cover reveals, especially live. I strongly believe in making sure you put the right back matter in there, which is like your, your newsletter. I mean, your link to your newsletter, asking for reviews. You need to put all that in there. These are all part of the process, but yeah, it's, it's, I will tell you, it's a little stressful. Yeah, definitely. I think this is one of those things that you can build up. I think mm -hmm. it can, it, if you're on your first book or, you know, your third book and you're quite new to this uh, or you're just new to marketing as a whole, um, sometimes being presented with a sort of 15 step program to launch your book can be a little bit daunting. So for me, I usually think about it as breaking it down into components over certain days. So I'm not doing too much. So I might have a day where I'm thinking about, OK, I'm going to need to create some graphics for this thing. So I might want to go on uh, Canva, um, yeah. which yeah, is an ex yes. excellent service for creating yes. um, graphics very, very easily. That's uh, C-A-N-V-A, canva.com. Um, so I might have a day where I just do that, where I just have a little play around with my artwork and, and, and know that I have those assets ready when I need them. Obviously, um, lots of things can be scheduled. You don't have, you don't to, have, to... You have to go crazy one day um, and just tell everyone on every platform. You can, you can schedule your email. You can schedule your Twitter account. Um, you can schedule Facebook, all those kind of things. So for me, I would generally look at a calendar and then just work my way backwards and, and think about when I want to contact people. Um, and keep a list. Every time you, you launch a book, keep a list of what you did. Mm -hmm. And then look at maybe how successful that was, how many engagements did you get on Twitter or whatever, or what your open rate was. Was it a good day that you sent the email out? And then think about changing that later on or adding to it later on. If you felt that was quite manageable and you could do more, then, then do more. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, Casey has, has, has a very organized list. I don't. I'm a little bit more scattergun. So yeah. I think I need to... I need to Need to practice that. <laughs> well, it'll be free on the website, so yeah, if you want. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I will. I will. Fantastic. It, it, where, where is that going to be? What's the web address? <laughs> it's iridindies.com under the resources tab. Ah, yes. interesting. We're putting stuff like where to get reviews, things like that. Yeah. Fantastic. Excellent. Excellent resource. Thank you. Okay, how do you get people to sign up if you don't have the book out yet? Oh. People will sign up to most things. If you it, honestly, I think if you if you go on if you're on social media, I mean, if you're not anywhere, then obviously no one's going to know about you because it's just going to be you and the cat. But if you're sorry, just as you took a drink, <laughs> <laughs> you and the cat. Thanks. <laughs> but if you're on Twitter or Facebook, I think if you posted, um, if you posted uh, coming soon, uh, fantastic, fantastic, you know, romance book, which is going to be um, and just like list your tropes, list what it's about. It's going to be a second chance romance. It's going to take place in London. It's going to, it, talk about what it's going to be about. Say come in soon and put a link to your email newsletter. I can guarantee you people will sign up because yeah. people will go, that sounds interesting. And all they're doing is giving you an email address. So okay. that's one of the things I do. Do you have any other advice on that, Casey? I actually do. Social media will be your friend. I know not everybody likes social media. And actually, you don't have to put a picture of yourself, even in your little circle. You can be a picture of your book cover or whatever's coming out. But I actually fell into this and it worked really well, is I asked for advice on my cover design. And that got so many people excited and into me. And, you know, they wanted input. They were great when I showed different versions. So that, that's a trick. That's a trick if you want to try to do that. Get people to engage with your post by asking their opinion and then get them on your newsletter list. Absolutely. Engagement is really important. Mm -hmm. um, just, just a sort of algorithm piece of information. Um, if, you, if you had two exactly identical accounts and they both posted something, one posted my book's out and another posted my book's coming out, are you excited? The one yeah. that says, are you excited, that gets a comment will be more visible on that social media platform than the other one. 
So engagement is really, really important. So if you can get people to reply to you, even if it's not necessarily relevant, if people just, because people will, as we all know, social media, people will come along and go, yes, I am excited. It's not, (laughs) it's not particularly interesting or relevant, but people like to communicate and that will um, have an effect on how many times that post is shown. So think about engagement because it's really, really important. Yes. Uh, we have another sneaky anonymous asking, um, have you noticed, especially with social media, that showing your face is important to market your books? I have heard that some people are worried about showing their face online, especially when it comes to writing with a pen name. Thoughts on that? Um, have you noticed showing your face versus not having a big impact? I don't think it matters all that much. No. no. Well, it can boost maybe, but it's not going to detract does that make sense yeah yeah i mean i people a lot of a lot of readers will like to know authors and like to socialize online with authors and you can have a more of it i mean if you're having a conversation with a picture of a book cover or someone or a cat or whatever then it's harder to maybe have that communication but i think most people um i don't think it makes a huge difference i don't think so no yeah. And if you don't really really sorry, sorry no, some really really big authors out there for example like anna stone huge seller never a picture i mean it's it makes it mysterious in some way so if you could pull that off you know that's that's cool and you don't have to put your picture out there obviously i put my picture everywhere <laughs> so it depends on what you're comfortable with yeah again i think that's 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 your own level of comfort um if anyone's told you you have to do one or the other i i wouldn't buy into that at all i don't think it's important okay right oh evie bancroft has come come across a supplementary question you said about having a newsletter but what do you find to talk about in them without being the hard sell oh i find everything to talk about yeah there's so much there's evie there's so much you can talk about there must be you know the weather my actually a lot of my newsletters start with uh, something along the lines with good grief it's september already i i'm found i'm that british person who just constantly says wow where did summer go and things like that (laughs) um but if you're i think evie i think your first book might be coming out soon i believe um if you don't have that much to talk about in terms of um books that have come out then it might be a good idea to think about uh talk about your writing process or when you were writing that book or cover design for that book, how you went about it, all those kind of things. There are other things that you can think about, break down the book into the components of what you did to get it out there. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people are interested in those things. How about you, Casey? Do you have advice for not hard selling? Just try to think like a reader. Don't think like an author, think like a reader. They want to know you and they want to know what you're doing. So I can even post about my favorite football team which is going to be embarrassing, but Oakland Raiders, you don't understand, but (laughs) they're horrible. So I can talk about how horrible they are in my newsletter and people will relate to you. They'll write back and say, are you kidding me? You like them? So you can put anything in there. They just want to know you. They want to know who you are. Absolutely. What sport is that? (laughs) It's American football. (laughs) Never heard of it. Um, (laughs) Um, Emma Wallace asks, um, hi Emma, by the way, um, if you create a mailing list, but you don't have many or any subscribers, how do you balance how much effort you put into making content for the mailing list newsletter and how do you get people to subscribe? Can you remember back to the early days, Casey? Mm, what did I say? Well, obviously I pushed it. I didn't do it right away. I, mean, I already admitted that. But when I started doing it, I put it, like I said, back in the book, all my posts, some, I try to link people to my website, which has the link to the email list. So if you can try to put your little, which means you don't need a website, let's back up a little bit. But yeah. if you can get people to go that direction through how you post, where it's at in your book, except for that, and then just try to be interesting. It's, it's not that hard. <laughs> it isn't. No, no. I, I, yeah, I think don't put a huge amount. If you've got three subscribers then you know don't put a huge amount of effort into it obviously um but you you can it's a good testing ground um it's a good testing ground to sort of you know the experiment with how you want the newsletter to look if it's if it's going out 
well how it's received or do the links work and things like that i think it's a lot it's a lot less stressful to hit the send button on a, n- a newsletter mailing list of like 15 than it is <laughs> 4000 so you know enjoy the moment emma you'll get there you'll have yeah. loads at one point um use it for practice don't spend too much time on it um it will start to grow social media website back of the book all the usual places um and and yeah, as as you move on, you'll be able to sort of share more content um, about the building of the book. There was a, actually just for a second. There was a chat just now from Karen. Yeah, which was perfect. If you're watching the chat, she, she said the perfect thing. They don't they they want to hear you're a dork. <laughs> they do. They want to hear about you as a person. So don't worry about what you write in your newsletter as long as you're honest. Very true. Thank you, Karen. Yes. Excellent. Right. Um, Alison, Alison asks, Amanda and Casey, obviously, can we talk a bit more about Amazon advertising? I did try it, but it was unsuccessful and I didn't want to pour money into something that wasn't going to help. I'm not a romance writer, by the way. Mm. Okay, so you'll have more experience on Amazon ads within our market as not a romance writer. It is harder. So I'll I'll, I'll agree with you on that. Um, But it's still the same idea. You're going to want to target I, I target authors. That's I don't know if Amanda does it, does it that way, but I target other authors, including maybe even traditional mainstream authors, to try to get my cover on their page. But it is it is challenging, and don't spend a lot of money on it unless it starts to be successful. You really got to watch the metrics. But yeah, you just got to find authors that are similar and put it out there. But don't don't stay in our niche necessarily. You can you can broaden it out. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I think it is harder. Um, it is harder when you're not uh, going with romance. Romance is where the money is in our genre and in mainstream as well. Um, you're, you're, you're sort of looking at a very small piece of pie of a very small piece of pie when you're going outside of the romance genre. But you can have success with Amazon ads. Um, I would I'd caution everyone with Amazon ads. It's a good way to lose money, um, but it's also... <laughs> And, you know, again, it's trial and error. I think with Amazon ads, it's about really learning how to use the platform and understanding it. And it is about trial and error. You do need to have some money that you can put into it and and program your ads and see how it works. And then pause your ads, look at the data and look at what you learn. There's some sort of basic rules that you can see how things worked or didn't work. So if you're you're getting impression, if you're not getting impressions, you're probably not using the right keywords or you're not targeting correctly. So an impression is somebody seeing your ad. If your ad isn't being served, it's not having an impression, then you're not paying enough, you're not bidding enough, or you don't have the right keywords. If you're getting impressions, but you're not getting clicks, then basically somebody is seeing a list of books Yours is one of them, an impression with your cover and your and the price of your book. And one of those things is turning them off. So you might want to look at your cover. You might want to look at your uh, your price. Um, if you're getting clicks, but you're not getting sales, then there might be something on your product page. So there might be something in your blurb. Your blurb might not be as enticing. So you've got someone you've got someone along the whole journey, but just before they actually hit the buy button, something stopped them. So you can use that data to look at every step of the way and see where you're falling down. If you're not getting impressions and it's keyword related or bid related, if you're not getting clicks, then it's something to do maybe with your cover or your price. And if you are getting clicks, but you're not getting sales, then it could be something to do with your product page. So all of that comes together. It can be a, a long process, but I mean, I've had amazing success with Amazon ads in the past. I've, I've made a lot of money from, from ads that um, I, I, I've, I've spent sort of a thousand dollars on ads one month and I made, I think about $6,000 worth of sales in a month. So, and that's not uncommon, that can happen, but you have to monitor the ads very, very, very carefully. That might've been the most useful 120 seconds that we might get out of this if you're looking at ads. That was beautifully done because that's exactly right all the way across the board. Very useful information. Um, Well, Alyssa asks, um, are there any courses that you can recommend on AMS? 
other than the one I just gave you in 120 seconds. I don't, I don't know. I've never really had to do AMS ads because I've, I've, I learned ads years ago and I know the platform. Have you tried any courses? I have not actually. I no. just kind of, I've got a book. There's a really good book out there. I can't think of the name and I wish I had the link, but do a <laughs> search. There's some books out there on how to do Facebook advertising and AMS and they're super helpful. You know, just just try to learn the process. Yeah, we spend a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, I my recommendations for courses on AMS is probably not to do a course because a lot of people love to charge authors money, yeah. and it's not necessarily relevant. Our market, and again, something really important. Our market is so different to anyone else. Um, so if you're looking at um, a well-known crime author who's trying to sell you Facebook ads, that may be very useful if you're a crime author, but if you're in sapphic fiction, that's going to not help you a lot. So our market is quite, quite different. Um, I'd say go on YouTube. That yep. Go on YouTube, yep. have a look for um, Amazon marketing ads for books. Yep. Um, you'll learn a lot. You can learn a lot on YouTube for absolutely free. Um, i I wouldn't recommend paying for a course. There's no course that I can yes. personally think of. Yeah. Excellent. Right. What else? How do you balance social media? How do you balance time on social media like Facebook groups, et cetera, and what you post on Twitter and Instagram? Uh, well, you need more hours in the day. Don't sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have a team of people. Yeah, that helps. Um, I th well, I think for me, um, it's, it's not that relevant to me and compared to my email marketing newsletter, but that's because of where I am in my author career. I know that hitting the send button on a mailing list is going to do me more good than being on Facebook. So for me, I kind of, if I don't, if I'm limited with time, I have a hierarchy of what I'll spend time on. Um, so for me, it will be email, then Facebook, then Twitter, then Instagram for me. But that's just because that's where I built up my audience because I'm most comfortable on, on Facebook and I'm least comfortable on Instagram because it takes work. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be me. How do I balance it? Um, when I have a book coming out and I have my little to-do list, um, I will be a lot more a lot more visible. Um, but it, it depends. Don't don't spend time on social media when you could be spending time building a website or building an email marketing mm -hmm. list. Before we started, we quickly talked about passive marketing, which is a term that we both dislike because there's, there's no real such thing as passive marketing. But there are, there are marketing methods which are sort of one hit and then you can go away. So building a website that you very occasionally update, um, that's sort of passive marketing. So if you have some spare time, um, and it's a choice between doing something that will work for you for a long time or an Instagram post that will disappear, then do the thing that will last the longest. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Um, I, I block out time because social media will just eat all your time. So try to block out time and stick to it. And the order you said is correct, is absolutely correct. I totally agree with you. Is that useful? Um, Say I totally agree. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love it. I'm I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> Me too. This is awesome. <laughs> Do you need a website in order to use Mailchimp or MailerLite? Mm. You don't need one, right? But you should always have one, right? <laughs> it's a tough one. No, you don't need one. Um, if you had a choice between starting up a website or starting up a, a newsletter i'd start personally i'd start a newsletter you too yeah um it's a little bit more used to you at you know straight out the gate but that's not to say that you shouldn't get a website but no you don't need one you don't need one you can you can happily mail whoever you like without right but there are free happen. websites let's make sure that people realize that there are places you can build a free website um, yeah. i'm on weebly and um, which i like I just started with them because they were free and you can just put up a couple pages and have on there your link to your newsletter so don't think it's going to be this overwhelming thing yeah 
yeah it's websites are a lot easier than it used to be like wix yeah. are really good they just have a drag and drop thing you go i want an image and you upload an image and you drag it and you make it the size you want like you literally just drag it around and suddenly you have a website it's a lot easier than it used to be um yes. there's a lot of sites out there which are just very very easy drag and drop yeah um elizabeth asked do you have any experience with or suggestions regarding tiktok <laughs> Mandy, are you using TikTok? <laughs> Personally, yes, I find it hilarious. I love to watch it. It's a great time suck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of what I do before bed. I just, um, yeah, yeah. but I don't use it for marketing. I know, I know there's been quite a few people recently who've been getting on TikTok because I, they, they all suddenly follow me and I'm like, I have no content. I'm yeah. like, one of the things I like to do on social media platforms is I go places to like stake my brand. Because I know that from from history, other people will go onto a social media platform and create my name. And then I'll go there and be like, oh, someone is pretending to be me. And you have to go through a whole process. So I went on TikTok to kind of create me because I could see a lot of other people in our genre work going on TikTok. And then I just found loads of fun videos, but I've never actually bothered trying to market on there. I tried. I tried. I posted like you can go look they're not great posted little videos of my process to write a book no hits no I mean it's just I don't know it's I'm gonna figure it out though I mean I'm gonna figure it out <laughs> because now it's become personal that's it's right it's, it's, exactly <laughs> yeah I, I think that's one of the things to think about with social media um different social media requires different content so Facebook is the mm -hmm. easiest because you can put um, links you can put text and you can put images right twitter you can put a short amount of text links and images instagram you can put images of a certain size but not the same size as your twitter or facebook so you're going to have to resize that sorry and you cannot put clickable links in your posts so if you're saying my book's out and putting a link no one can click on that and no one's typing that in so but it's unlimited, unlimited text, so you can write your blurb and stuff in there if you want to. So yeah. They all have their strengths. Yeah, so you can absolutely do that. You can you can put a lot of information about the book in there, and then you could put your link into your bio. So you're changing yeah. your profile every mm -hmm. single time you want to potentially put a link on there. Um, so if someone's found an old post of yours and you've released three books since then, they're going to go to your bio and find your, your latest link. So sometimes you have to put like a link tree in there. And then TikTok is, is video. So you have to become a video editor of some description. You've got to think about your strengths and how much time you have. But if you I saw someone the other day talking about um, trying to get started on Instagram. They're very different. You can't just repopulate your content again and again, even just for the basic fact that they're different sizes of images. Right. Yeah, that's true. Right. What else? Uh, what's that platform for easy website building? Weebly? Webly? Yeah, I use Weebly. W-E-E-B-L-Y. That's how I started. That's the one I use. I now I purchase a package, but it does start free. Yeah. Um, and I use Wix, uh, W-I-X. They're essentially the same thing. They're very, yeah. very similar. Yeah. Um, how about BookBub ads? Do you use them? Not necessarily the deals, but their display ads. Yes, I do both their deals and the display ads. When, only when the book is first coming out because yeah, they, they'll promote it that way. And I do target authors to do it, but I do use BookBub ads, yes. Yeah, I have historically used book bob ads, but I, I sort of run out of time. So I stuck with what I know with Amazon ads. So just in case no one knows, BookBub um, is a service. It's an email sort of newsletter service where people sign up to get cheap deals on books. And you go into BookBub and you say, I like crime or thriller or mystery or whatever. And then they, they store your data. And then us little authors come along and say, we'd like to email those people and we have to apply for a featured deal um, in order to email all those people. And you have to put your book down in price or give it away for free to email those people. And you pay for the privilege of that email going out. And you'll see sometimes people going, yay, I've got a book bub deal. That means they've, they've managed to achieve one of those. And then they have display ads that in those emails, at the bottom, you'll see ads. 
So um, that works quite similar to Amazon ads. It's a similar kind of platform, but um, I found sometimes you couldn't target people unless they already had like a big book bub following yeah. audience on there. So it kind of depends on who you want to target. Um, I'd actually say maybe BookBub would be better if you're not a romance author in our market because then that, I presume you can no no I would disagree I still think romance is king on there I, and you put in TV or someone else they have a huge following it's romance it, yeah. yeah easier to find the authors you disagreed <laughs> yay <I'm- laughs> yay we did it at last. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think, well, BookBub Display Ads, I, I've had some success, but I've not really played with it, but the um, the system seemed a lot more intuitive to me and a lot yes. easier to know what works um, yes. than Amazon Ads. Amazon Ads, you do have to kind of know your data, whereas BookBub will just go, this worked for this yeah, reason. Pretty much, yes. There's a nice little graph. Yeah. Yeah. But they're um, expensive. Don't lose a bunch of money on it again, just like AMS ads or, book, or uh, Facebook ads. <laughs> Watch your bottom line. Don't invest a ton of money until you're seeing it work. So yeah. start small. Start small. Yeah, start small. Yeah. Um, speaking of Facebook ads, Rachel asks, has either of you had any success with Facebook ads? Mm. I haven't. Romance. <laughs> <laughs> I've only had success with my, my contemporary romance books. Yeah. And hopefully this one. This, whoops, this one because it's romance, but I wouldn't try it on my my others because they're just not enough adventure readers. It's just hard to target. Yeah, I think that's the thing to remember with Facebook ads. You have to find somebody to target. Yeah. So you're looking for what Facebook ads allows you to do is to um, drill down an audience. So if you're looking for people who read books and read crime yes, you'll probably be able to find them. But if you're looking for people who are sapphic and read romance, it might be more difficult because Facebook might not actually have those parameters set up. And some people don't announce on Facebook that they're LGBT. So again, you might not have a lot of luck reaching people. So it's it's hit and miss with Facebook. You can lose a lot of money on Facebook ads. Um, but again, if it's something you're willing to tweak and keep trying, I think you, you can have success now. And obviously, obviously you have. Right. One thing about all those we just talked about, your cover has got to be fantastic. I can't stress enough because that's the first thing I see. That's what's yeah. selling the book. So make sure your cover really is a rock star too. Absolutely. Um, right. Uh, Doreen asks, and I won't be able to answer this, but I suppose I can from history. Um, is Kindle Unlimited a part of your marketing strategy? Absolutely. Yes. Half of my sales. No, yes. Yeah. Kindle Unlimited. Yes. Um, I've tried wide, which is more of the traditional way. They don't have Kindle Unlimited and not have the success that I have going with that because a lot of our readers in our niche are, they, they're on it. They use it because they read so many books. So if you have an, a, a reader who reads 100 books a year or more, you know, some huge numbers, they're going to use Kindle Unlimited because it's the cheapest way to go. It's only like $10 a month or something. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's huge. It, it really can make a difference. Yeah. So I'm with a publishing house and publishing houses don't use Kindle Unlimited on the whole, but I am a huge fan of Kindle Unlimited and I think it is very successful. It's absolutely the reason why I managed to get my books in front of so many people. I, I guarantee I would not be selling the amount of books I sell now if people hadn't had the opportunity to read my books for free with Kindle Unlimited so right. yeah I think it, it's very important yeah and they're, they're more willing to try you out because they can just send it back they don't like it the first pair, first chapter or whatever they send it back it doesn't cost them anything but they'll be willing to try you so that's another plus yeah definitely okay when is the best time to post content some people are offline during the weekend, taking time off from social media, et cetera. And some people only have free time during weekends to read social media posts. I love these blog posts you get where if you're, if you're going to put a Twitter post out, it must be at 3.34 on a Tuesday. And you think, well, where are you in the world? Like, yeah. and why? 
Um, it, it changes. And my answer will be different to KC's answer because our audiences are different. Um, I think it's trial and error. It's trial and error. Any, any platform, if you're using Facebook, for example, and you're using Facebook, uh, not your individual profile, but a business page or a page, you can see your analytics and then you can see very clearly which days you get your most engagement. Um, you can do the same for Twitter. It's a little bit more complicated, but you can see the analytics. Um, but just post it more often. Just post it several times. It's fine. You know, slightly change the word and talk about something quite different. Um, and for me, again, it comes down to engagement. Because if you're, if you're creating engagement with people, your posts are more likely to show up and it doesn't necessarily matter what time of day you post. Right. So doesn't it, it doesn't necessarily matter. Um, you, everyone's probably going to notice this. Um, your, your, your timeline on any social media platform is not linear. It's, you know, we all complain. We go, why am I seeing this now? It's from four days ago. It's because Facebook or Twitter or whoever thought that would be relevant for you at the time. So I don't think there is any time. Do you want to disagree with me just for, just for fun? Just for fun? Yes, yes. exactly. Monday at 9.35 a.m. But uh, you have to keep track of time zones, too. If you think about it, you have readers in all time zones, so you can't really target a time. They're going to be asleep when these other people are awake. And so, yeah, just the more content would be more significant than the timing of the content. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. We're running out of time, but you know, see. Wow, we sure are. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that went what fast. Happened? That went fast, but we're gonna we're gonna try and squeeze some more out because I don't have anywhere to be. No, you no. Know. Um, is selling a novel written in past, uh, sorry, present tense, more difficult than selling a novel in past tense? Wow, I've that's... I've only ever written in past tense. Now I've written in, I've written my billionaire series in in that um, present tense first person, and it, it is hard. It's yeah. really hard to stay in that. And they sold well, so I don't know. What, that's a really hard question. Is I don't even know if there's an exact answer. If no. some people don't like first person, some I mean, it just depends on your reader. It really depends. Yeah, I it's a difficult one. Um, I, I only ever write in third person past um, and I have enormous respect for anyone who can write in, in present or in first person or anything other than what I write in because I just can't. I can't write in anything else. So like, you know, kudos, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, but then I do hear some people say that they don't like things written in first person. I, yeah. I don't think I've yeah. ever heard anyone say they don't like things written in third person. So that is more common. So yes, you might find a bit of pushback. But to be honest, write the book. Write yeah. the book you want to right. write and, right. and you'll find people. They'll love it. I yes. promise. That's exactly right. Yes. Just write the book. Write what you want. You'll find people who read it. Okay, Cindy, I think I missed your question from earlier. Uh, people talk about also having a brand but how narrow or niche do your books have to be to be a successful brand? Um, and what if you want to follow the muse and write something outside that niche or even outside your genre? Does that impact your brand? Well, you're, you're a brand of multiple genres, Casey, aren't you? Yes, I am. And I'll tell you, when, you, when you're going to come up with a brand, you are trying to sell the author, not the book. So yes, if you sell the author, they can, we can switch around. We can go wherever we want because that's how your following is. They're following me as a person. They're not buying just the book. So a brand is important. Brand is important. Make sure you're comfortable with it before you start it because you have to stick with it no matter where you go. But yes, focus on yourself if you're going to come up with a brand. Absolutely. I agree. I mean, I, 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 predominantly write contemporary romance but I've written mystery as well um put up with it it's me I'm writing a different style of book some people will read them some people won't um I think some people stick a little bit too rigidly to the idea of a brand and you know you must always be on brand um if you can really lean heavily into your brand if you always write the same style of book great well done but if you do occasionally fall out of that niche as Casey says people are following you you're the brand, the author is the brand more, more than um, more than specifically the book. <laughs> Here's a good one. We were talking about this before we start. Thoughts on using Goodreads. 
Oh, now, no. personally, <laughs> I call Goodreads mean reads because um, <laughs> if, if you're looking to really be depressed and, and feel bad, as an author, just head over to Goodreads for half an hour. You That will suck any creativity out of you. Um, Goodreads is for readers. It's not for authors. I don't use it. I know some people do. I'm there simply to, again, to put my little, my little flag in the ground. I own my profile there so I can make changes. If I change my website or my Twitter account or something like that, I could go in and edit that. But when I do anything on Goodreads, I've I'd like to do this because I don't want to see anything other than the thing I've gone in to do. So I do not use it. Yeah, I don't use it either. I try to stay away from it because there's just some mean people on Goodreads. I'm not, you know, mean people. I don't know about saying that, but yes, that's literally what it is. They want to put stuff on there to cause controversy. And I do have a page, like you said, I do in the back of my book say, please give me a review on Goodreads, but I probably won't read it. So to be honest. Yeah. Okay, this is controversial considering who's hosting this, but does submitting your book for awards make any difference in your experience? <laughs> I submit them, I've never won one, so it's all well, I've won a Lambda a <laughs> and it makes no difference. I sold a few more copies. Um, I sold a few more paperback copies. Uh, actually, I sold quite a few paperback copies and then about 50% of them got refunded six months later when they realized <laughs> no one wants these. So whatever sad, sappy bookstore <laughs> bought them, refunded them. Um, no, you can use it for marketing. It is obviously very useful if, you, if you're if you a finalist or if you win. Um, I was um, in the middle of the pandemic. I was... Um, a fine list for the Amazon Kindle Storyteller Award. I was made into a cardboard cutout and anyone in the UK, Claudia Winkleman, that goddess was the host. I sold a few more books, but I was one of like five out of thousands of people who entered that contest. I was one of the five finalists. Not a lot happened. Not a lot happened. Um, it depends on the award. It depends on the book. It depends on the marketing that surrounds it. It depends on luck sometimes. So... No, from my experience, I don't think it's, um, I don't think not, it makes much difference. Not to totally discount awards. I mean, no, that's a great way to test yourself as an author if you get an award. Um, but I, I have never seen people who have an award sell more than someone who hasn't. No, no. Um, it's not, it's not going to be a sales driver. I don't feel. You'll, you'll sell a few more, but, you know, you're, you're not going to be placing the, down payment on the on the yacht um any other places online that's not social media to find and connect with our target audience hmm. nothing that i can think of with well, the gcis obviously well obviously for you yes yeah. absolutely um, yeah it's, i can't think of anything else either unfortunately i wish if i thought of one i'd, I'd tell you well, I suppose I read indies as well. If any of your indies aren't on social media, that would be a sort of central point for them, your, yes. the website. Yes. So point. completely without bias, I read indies.com and goldencrown.org. I think they're the only ones I can come up with. Yeah. Mainly social media. I know lots of people hate social media. I am sorry. Are you okay to go on for a few more minutes? Because we still have quite a few questions. Shall we? Celeste is fine with it. I'm fine with it. That's, that's right. Gee, so are we fine with it? You can tell us in the chat. Um, <laughs> I'm carrying on. Let's carry on. Let's keep going. Um, right. Da, da, da. Yeah, our bosses, our bosses are saying yes. That's brilliant. Thanks, guys. Go. Okay. <laughs> Is there someone you know to hire to help with newsletters, social media, and starting up a mailing list for anybody not so savvy? Asking for a friend. Wink. Um, <laughs> I don't know of anyone. Do you know of anyone who takes on that? Uh, there are virtual assistants out there, but I've never used one. And you need to be really careful how much you pay someone to do that. Yeah. I think it can sometimes seem like a good idea, but never, never, never would you say to someone, right, you, you can go and be me because that person needs your information. They need to know when your book's coming out. They'll need your book cover. So by the time you've done all that and sent it all off to them, then might you have done it yourself? Yeah. Um, so no, unfortunately, we can't recommend anyone. Okay. Um, 
what is the best way to market yourself when you only have one book out there and you're very slow to get books out? Mm, boy, writing faster does help. But um, again, you're going to have to go with a personal side. You're going to have to connect with them. You have to get engagement on the author and not on the book. So that that is a bigger lift, I will tell you. And yeah, you're... I hate to say it, but the two big things are inventory and visibility. And if you don't have a lot of inventory, it can be a challenge. Yeah, yeah. It is tough. I mean, one of the pieces of advice I'd give is to um, consider breaking your book down into its components and thinking about marketing it a different way. So you're, you've presumably shown the cover and shown the blurb a few times, but think about what does the book contain? Are there any specific tropes? Is there a passage you're very, very proud of? Is there anything like that? Try to try to get as much marketing benefit as you can out of the one book you've got and try to show it to people in a different way. Um, if you find a, an image, a free, free to use image on Pixabay or something like that, that is relevant, then, you know, you can post that and say, this puts me of mind of the time when my character bungee jumped or whatever, you know, just try to use quotes too. You can do quotes, quotes. Like out of your book. Lots of people do that too. Yes, yeah, so that's also very powerful. Yeah. Um, how important is it to send out advanced reader copies? Oh, I do not. Neither do I. Oh, wow. Because some people send out hundreds. I mean, there's some, some people yeah. that send out a lot. Yeah, BSB do have a list, I will admit. They use NetGalley. Um, and when I was with Ilva, they sent out a substantial number. But I I mean, I, I self-published around 14 books. I don't know the number. I just made that up around that. I don't know. I don't know. I self-published a, a substantial number of books. And one of the things I did was one month I got, um, I felt a little bit enthusiastic and I sent out a lot a lot of advanced reader copies and the next month I got so fed up that or the next book I got so fed up that hardly anyone left a review that I sent out none um because I got grumpy and there was no difference <laughs> no difference at all no difference in sales no I sold more there was um no difference in reviews nothing yeah, yeah. but if yeah. you're new it might be different I would say yeah that could be true although I I warn you some of those reviews will be bad <laughs> so yeah, yeah on, my, on my first book, I was so excited. I sent out art and uh, got some not super happy reviews, which it was a very interesting backfire. So I don't do it now. I got grumpy. Isn't that the word? I got grumpy. Yep, you get grumpy. A lot of my marketing comes down to I got grumpy and stopped doing, then realized I didn't have to do it anymore. <laughs> That's your trial and error right there. If it That's made you what... grumpy, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, it made me too grumpy. Could be bothered. Um, how important, and this is a good one for you, how important is cross-marketing, i.e. authors marketing other authors? Well, yeah, super important. We're going to do I read indies. I will say it this time. Uh, we cross-market each other because we're kind of networking. That's one of the points of it. But, yeah, you need to find a, a, a group somehow, and you need to share our newsletters. You tweet each other's stuff. So, yeah, it is important to make contacts. Um, and friendships, that's another nice thing about our niche is there are a lot of people that will become friends with you. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I hate working with people. No, I'm kidding, I, I think it's brilliant. <laughs> Um, I've, I've created so many initiatives trying to get people to work together. That summer loving anthology that we were in together and things yes, like that. Yes, we did that. that. And then we did the back of the book thing. Yes, yeah, we have. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I think it's brilliant. I think it's really important to work with other authors because um, it's, it's the, the rise and tide races all ships. So, you know, I might, I might share some posts. I might go on Twitter today and see a few interesting books that are coming out and share a few things on Twitter. Um, it doesn't benefit me, but it will benefit that author. And hopefully one day they'll do that back. And, right. you know, and maybe other people will do that and they will bring more people into the market as a whole. So, right. And I think I'm going to important. jump on that and point out, yes, tide, tide rises all ships. I like that one a lot because we're not competitors. I'm not competing with Amanda to sell books. She's not competing with me, I hope. Because it's not, it's not, there's so many readers. There's so many readers. Don't think about that person that sells more than me. Think about that person as an ally. 
So yeah, I see that a lot. People are thinking there's an infinite number, not an infinite number. So yeah. 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 I mean, readers can read a lot quicker than we can all write. Right. A lot quicker. So I, I don't have any problem advertising someone else's book. I don't feel that, you know, there's no reader that's going to read like one book this year. And is it going to be mine or is it, is it going to be Casey's? It's a, it's a author death match. It's, it doesn't work like that. You know, that they'll read both of us if they're aware of them. So, yes. okay. We're going to go for two more questions and then, and then we're going to have to say goodbye. Um, or we'll be here all night and it's so much fun and we could be here all night Well, night for me anyway um Doreen says you've touched on this but I think it's really important and I and I want to I want to really go into this how important is the cover in in marketing it is number one thing to get well not I'll take it back write a really good book and get it edited write the best book you can that's the most important thing but second is a cover definitely yeah it, it's your first impressions it makes me cry when i know someone's written an incredible book and then they've put a terrible cover on it because it just means that some people won't pick that book up some people would just not not oh. <laughs> cat look at it look at there it's like, oh. <laughs> see and that's great as well also have a cat i mean my yes. cat's outside but have a cat no i it's so important to have good a good book cover and um, dare I say, we're not always the best judge of how good a book cover is. So Casey said before, get a little bit of reader feedback. Don't trust what everyone says. If someone says, absolutely go for that cover, you know, that person might be blind in one eye. You don't know. So be careful. But, you know, try to get wide opinion and try to think about um, what your market is. Look at what other people are doing, not just in yes. our genre, look in yes. other genres. So, I mean, I look quite often in women's fiction as a whole, because although my books are contemporary romance, they also con contain other stories, more women's fiction stories. So I look at people like Marianne Keyes and things like that. Um, and a lot of women's fiction authors will have completely different um, book covers in the UK and the US. So consider that as well. But look widely and, you know, don't necessarily trust yourself and don't necessarily trust your best friend. Try to get... A little bit yeah. of um don't trust your mom. <laughs> yeah, really. I, I did too. Mom. I did that too. <laughs> Definitely look at other covers. Look at other covers and see what's out there and what's selling. I mean, I, this is Nora Roberts. That's that's what I went after. That's the look yeah. I was looking for. So yeah, look at other covers. And when it comes to cover design, maybe not always make yourself. I mean, I do a lot of my own covers with a graphic design background, but if you don't have that background, there are lots of sites where you can buy a pre-made cover. And it's not going to cost you a lot. And those covers look really good. So yeah. or there's also people you can actually just hire to make a cover, a brand new cover, which is awesome. So yeah, there's, there's yeah. options. Definitely, definitely. It is one of the most important things, if not the most, as we say, write in a book. Absolutely. Um, but just be really, really careful because, you know, there are some people out there who just they don't know what they're doing and and you yeah. have to be very careful you have to have an idea of what you want um so just um it's it's important and on the similar note final question of the night it's been so much fun but we have we have to go eventually um have you ever changed a cover and got better results i have not I have. Do I have my example? Oh, you change your covers all the time. That's right. I you do. I do. Lots of covers. Lots of covers. Oh, goodness. I'm too me. lazy to do that. Let me do it. You're not lazy, are you? Let me see. Let me see. So, Lost at Sea is a good example. Um, I changed all of my covers a while ago because, yes. you know, again, background in graphic design. So, Lost at Sea used to be this and it sold quite well, but then it became this, which without the hideous band across yeah, it. Um, to, <laughs> I, you're not an author unless you have one with this or like multiple ones. Yeah, you can actually see, I get mine too. You can actually just see my lines. Yeah. Um, Those are for me. Yeah. It's really, really important if you feel that you're changing your brand and you think actually my covers would look better, then then yeah, I think it's important to um, change a cover. If you if you didn't get a good result, you can always change a cover. It's not yeah. going to have Definitely. the same effect as relaunching it in, or like relaunching it or launching it for the first time. You are relaunching a book, but yeah, it can definitely bring life back to a book, I think. 
Oh, I agree with that. Definitely. If you have a book and it's not selling really well and you look at the cover and go, oh, maybe I can do better. Yeah. Put a new cover on it. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely worth the, worth the time and effort. Okay. Thank you, everyone. This has been incredible. Um, we <sighs> are recording. It will go on our YouTube channel. I'm just going to say, I don't know when. I'm going to say in a few days. That's a good That's a good. Yeah, Susie's number. pretty awesome. So we'll give Susie's Susie, great. Susie, Susie loves Garner. us. If we say days. a few days, she'll do it in a few days. Um, if I, you have a little closing blurb, by the way. So. <gasps> really? Oh, oh wow. Okay. That's what Claire was going to say. So I got to make sure oh. I say it. I hope Claire, I hope Claire's okay. Yeah, I hope you're we wish better. you all the best, Claire. If you, even if you're seeing this in the future, we hope you, you you weren't ill for too long. I agree. All right, here, here you go. This is the last bit. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for attending all about the all about marketing panel. How much can I mess this up? Your questions were greatly appreciated. They were. If a lot of questions aren't answered due to time limitations, we may have another session. Oh man. Wow. Part two. That would be awesome. Yeah. And of course, help us out, make that happen with donations. Those links should be in the chat and we all really appreciate it. And that is a wrap. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Casey. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. Oh, I enjoy you a lot. That's so fun. Okay. Take care.